يا حسين 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 يا حسين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته You're watching Hadda TV viewers and this is Sayyid Ali from Brisbane, Australia With me today we have Mr. Dr. Oz with us and he's very well known in the Australian community and every Shia community as well as the communities that are raising awareness he's also involved with them uh, he was before he was based in Brisbane and he has moved to Perth now he's all around the, uh, Australia he's going to Sydney giving lectures he's one of the rising scholars with us and we like to take a few minutes from him uh, first to get his introduction and then we'll get on to the topic the topic that we're looking today is Islamic identity in West and especially focusing our youth and uh, our up upcoming generation uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah um, Dr. Oz, if you can give your brief introduction and your background how you have, because I've seen you getting involved with different communities and especially with the youngsters if you can give your brief introduction about your background uh, yeah Ahsantun, thank you very much A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wa Sallallahu Ala Nabiyyina Muhammadin Wa Alihi Al-Tayyibin Al-Tahirin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, thank you, first of all, Sayyid Ali, for this uh, opportunity. And uh, alhamdulillah, uh, I have been a resident uh, in Australia for over 20 years now. Ashallah. I spent most of my uh, childhood here and, uh, and uh, my you know, youth. Uh, and uh, I uh, was ur I'm originally from Iraq, Iraq. Uh, the city of Najaf. Mashallah. And uh, we moved uh, to Australia in the 90s and I completed my schooling here. I completed my university here. And then I uh, went back uh, to the Islamic seminary for a few years in Najaf, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. And then I continued with some of the scholars here in Australia, in Sydney, uh, some uh, my Islamic studies, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. So I have, uh, alhamdulillah, experienced, first of all, growing up in Australia, in, Australia. in, in the Western uh, world at the same time as uh, knowing what it's like to be from a different background. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the same time being a minority mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time uh, having alhamdulillah the, you know as much islamic knowledge as i can to be able to be aware of what what is happening so uh, alhamdulillah and in return after this this uh, this uh, this journey i'm trying to give back to my youth because i see all the youngsters in front of me i see them as i was when i was in year 6 year mm -hmm. 7 and high school and and you know the difficulties Difficult. that we all lived through when we were in high school and then when we finished high school we went to university and and you know the tribulations that yes. you go through as a muslim <laughs> living in the west so uh as a result i have been uh heavily involved in the uh saturday school in the madrasa Andres. alhamdulillah in brisbane over 10 years we've had a uh, a school, a Saturday school by the name of Fatima to Zahra, alayha, alayha, Islamic Salaam. school, and also with the Islamic, uh, with the University of Queensland, we were doing theology lessons every Friday night with the university students, and uh, and then obviously all the Islamic events in the different Islamic centers, in the Iranian community, in the uh, Islamic Shia Council of Queensland. Mm -hmm and other communities around So you were Australia. very busy. I was very busy, alhamdulillah. But you know, uh, when you are, you know, uh, occupied with these important matters, yeah. you don't feel, you know, you don't feel the exhaustion because you see the significance, you see the importance of these matters and you feel like, you know, you need to even put more effort into it. So alhamdulillah, yes, it is difficult, but, uh, and you, and it is busy, but at the same time, of course, uh, this is on top of Alhamdulillah. I have finished uh, a bachelor and a master's degree in Gosh. dental in dental uh, science. To your doctor, so I'm, a, I'm a de yes, I'm a dentist by profession, and yeah. I uh, practice mm -hmm. uh, in a dental practice in my common Monday to Friday job. So uh, that's Marshall. that's also keeping me busy. Alhamdulillah, uh, but uh, uh, that's life. You know, uh, Islam is a religion for your whole for life. Whole life. Yeah. Uh, it looks after your uh, social life, mm -hmm. it looks after your uh, spiritual, spiritual life, life, and it looks after uh, your family life. Marshall. So you have to be able to strike the correct balance, balance. between all three of them. 
and uh, and alhamdulillah those who are able to achieve that balance and that's what we strive for bi ta'ala and with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be able to strike that balance so you have been involved uh, as you can see your viewers like he's a dentist as well as his balancing uh, like the sheer commitment or religious commitment so you have been working for a while in the communities as you mentioned so do you see any impact the, the what drives you through that yes you want to do more is it the impact the result yes. that you see is yes. it of course First of all, we have to know that our taklif, our responsibility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we do what we think is the right thing to do. As for the outcome, as for the results, that is not in our hands. That is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We leave that in His hands. Uh, however, alhamdulillah, I have been here long enough to be able to see the impact. Not that if we, there was no impact, it would stop us or it would make us feel hopeless or, or stop from doing not alhamdulillah <clears throat> we have actually kept on going uh, regardless of the difficulties you know what it's like with the difficulties of buying a place you know um, when we were in Brisbane yeah. to start off with we didn't have a center, center at all yes. we used to hire different community halls from different places and and different schools mm. and alhamdulillah now we have a, an established place so yes the difficulties are there no doubt and but at the same time the 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 fruit is, is also is there. there so you can see the I results can see. Yeah. I, I remember some of the kids that I used to teach when they were uh, in primary school uh, you know simple surah of Quran mm -hmm. and uh, how to you know the ahkam of salah and how the ahkam of fasting and things like that as they are you know reaching that mm -hmm. age of blue and I remember then as the years went on I was invited at the University of Queensland one day to host uh, an Imam Hussein mm -hmm. day and I walked into the Imam Hussein day and I saw the uh, the, 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 the hall, the yeah. hall yeah. and the, the, the seats filled with the same faces of those kids that Mashallah. I was and that, that were at the madrasa yeah. uh, 10 years ago 10 years ago, 10 years ago. so Alhamdulillah if any of those were you know guided in somehow or another of course the guidance is from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but with some contribution from the madrasa then alhamdulillah we have been successful as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said to amir al-mu'minin alayhi salam that if if uh, ya ali if god guides one mankind one one human being mm -hmm. with you if he guides one human if you can guide one human being towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is better for you than anything on this earth and anything in the heavens. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is this is the best thing you can you do can, is yeah. you can be some form of source of guidance for others. Mashallah. So you so you have seen yourself growing up in Australia and West, and now you see other kids, other youths that are growing up. What is the main difference that you're seeing uh, in terms of uh, things are getting easier, difficult? Like you know, what's your overview on that? Look. Uh, it, it, it's very hard to say because it seems like every generation seems to think that it is more difficult than the previous generation. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that is Sunnah al Hayat, that things are getting more difficult, or if that is uh, the general concept that human beings always think that they have it worse than the previous <laughs> than the previous generations. To be honest with you, without categorizing it into difficulty and levels of difficulty, I think the challenges are there. Right there. We cannot bury our Denial. hand in yeah. the sand and say no there's no challenges <laughs> we are living a happy life <laughs> financially stable this 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 no the difficulties are there no mm. doubt the question is how do we tackle them and how do we deal with them and how do we um, be confident enough that we are going to raise a healthy and prosperous and uh, and and uh, strong Muslim mm. community that is going to survive in these conditions without too much difficulty. Too much. I mean, the difficulty has to be there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy <laughs> Quran, Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan fa mulaqi. Oh, human being, you are going to go through the tribulations trials, and solutions. trials and trials and trials until you go back to your Lord. So we will, there is no doubt, those tribulations will be there. Come, yeah. But <clears throat> 
the you know how do we deal with them is is what matters mm -hmm. all right so uh, this is one part of where we are saying that what's affecting the youth in the west but at the end of the day you can see there's increasing number of majalises uh what i have seen on the tvs what it used to be the media as you can see that had their tv there's more other more tvs who are doing this job in western media of you know uh, creating this uh how can i say uh, a passage for for Azadari to go through online, uh, we're having processions on the road. Uh, we used to have few numbers, now we've got more numbers. We see a lot of youth, you know, involving in Azadari. In terms of that, what do you say? Like, is it the are we heading to easier time where the youth of this time can easily get to know the Ahlul Bayt and you love more because he's getting more time to spend with the thoughts and the morals and the lectures like you mm -hmm. people giving them that yes this is the right this is the right way I have to go so do you yes. reckon it's it's more uh, easier for them now yeah. in terms of access to information Alhamdulillah access to information has become a lot easier now you know with the press of a button in your hands you can listen to any majlis around the world as you drive to work mm -hmm. in the morning or as you drive home from university in the evening you can listen to any majlis you want you can uh, spend you know spiritually be in karbala uh, while you are watching mm -hmm. it on your phone or mm -hmm. you know it, it it is all now like nowadays at, we at have the vr as well uh, vr so cameras Marshall, that's and you know you can watch live the shrine of amir al muminin alayhi salam you can watch the shrine of imam hussein alayhi salam day to day 24 mm -hmm. hours all day all night and uh, you can watch what the other Islamic centers are doing your favorite speaker you can watch him anywhere around the world as he delivers lectures because they're being lively live broadcast so alhamdulillah access to information is there but that comes with another challenge as well as we have access to Islamic data and Islamic information we also have now the temptations are much wider the other application, the social media, the other uh, so-called social celebrities and all of these uh, temptations are, are also multiplying. Yes, they're pushing more, they've they're got also more pushing, money. Exactly yeah. right. So, yeah. so what we have to provide, our responsibility as uh, Islamic uh, centers and, and, uh, and people you know, looking after the, the media side of things, is we have to provide the quality. Quality quality and and depth so that the youth they find the purpose mm -hmm. in flicking to our channel or in, <laughs> instead, of in instead of anything else. anything else because they find that this is meaningful, meaningful. this is useful this has got a purpose and this is for this life and here after yeah that's life. right this is going to make my day-to-day -day life better and it's going to make my akhira better and I, uh, I can see where he's coming from. I can, uh, I, I can uh, relate <coughs> in my in my day to day life, in my day to day uh, relations. So this is this is this is very important, and this is what I say here to the parents, especially, and to the Islamic centers and to people preaching, is that we need to always explain to the kids why it, we are doing something. So, for example, if you say being religious is good. <laughs> Why? 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 What, what does religion give me? Right? Yeah. That's what they so ask. You have to clarify your you basics and clarify. make it strong yeah. enough that yeah. you know especially, why you're doing Especially it. as the kids get to that age. 12, 13, 14, teenage age, as they call it, puberty, mm. they become, they're not like mm. five year olds, six year olds. You know, where yeah. you say to them, do this because, that, do because daddy, said, daddy so. said so. Yeah, right? So that you have to be able to explain to them why. What does religion give me more? Or what does Islam give me? What does the school of Ahlul Bayt give me that makes me superior or gives me an advantage over the others? Because this is what happens. We all get asked. They say, well, you know, if we get sick, we need, all need medicine. Medicine, yes. If we need to make money, we all have to go to work. <laughs> if we want to get education, we all have to go to school. So what makes a religion, religious <laughs> people better than non-religious people? That's right? right. That's true. The answer is that religion, it provides you with answers to essential questions in your life. What's the purpose of life? What is the purpose of life? Where did I come from? Mm -hmm. What am I doing here? This 60, 70, 80 years that I'm here, what am I doing? And where am I going? Where am I going? If you, if somebody says to you, you're going to the airport tomorrow, 
The first thing is you say, show me the ticket, the yeah. itinerary. I want to know where, where am I traveling to? Where's the stopover? What's the plane? Which, what's Why am I going for What's my seat here? number? Yeah, yeah. You know, all of these things. Do I need to pack any food? Do I need to pack any clothes? Is it, is it hot? Is it cold? Akhirah, this is the journey of Akhirah. Religion is the only philosophy, religion is the only school of thought that gives you the answer to these mm. important questions. Okay. What am I doing here? Where am I going? All right. Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, sorry, I'll just share yeah, no, this no, no, hadith please. with you because it's on the yeah, same yeah. topic and Kalam uh, al-Amir, yeah. Amir al-Kalam, you know? Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, so Imam Ali alayhi salam, he has a beautiful saying in, in every topic we can think of. He says, Rahimallahu abdan arifa min ayn wa fi ayn wa ila ayn. Yeah. May God have mercy. God has will 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 bring mercy down on a person who knows from where did he come? What is he doing here? And where is he going? Where is he going? Yeah. Subhanallah. So so we say we say to our youth that why do I have to go to Madrasa? I already go to school from Monday to Friday. <laughs> now I have to go to school on Saturday as well. And they give me homework as well. I have to read Quran, I have to <laughs> memorize the names of the Imams, I have to memorize this, I have to memorize that. I already go to school, I already have maths homework, I already have science homework. He say, these are important sciences, but what is more important than that is that you know your purpose in this life. And religion is the only source that will give you that purpose. Yes. That's yeah. the only light that we have in our That's life. exactly right. It's like, okay, now getting to the information, you were talking about the information, now getting directly to the Islamic information, you see nowadays, uh, um, as I can say, the information is easily available. There is wrong information and right information, yes. specific to Islamic information yes. that we're getting. Yes. How do the youth struggle? Like they, they struggle. They, there are some things that are conflicting each other, especially if you are uh, in the lead of some ayatollah, and then there is some, you know, these sort of uh, conflicts that are coming, and you can see there is conflict of information. How do you tackle with that? Yes. And this is very has become a very big issue, especially with the social media and the sharing of videos and oh. sharing of clips, short, oh, clips, short clips that have been cut with no into, context. With no yeah. context, and then yeah. the translation. You don't know if the translation is correct. Right. You don't know what the source is. You don't know in what year it happened. You don't know where it happened. It's just somebody who shares a post or mm. shares a video. No credibility. No yeah. credibility. Yeah. So our youth have to be very careful with that. We have to be always very aware and, and, and we have to remember that Alhamdulillah our scholars they have put in all the effort to make official websites, mm -hmm. all our maraja, Alhamdulillah may Allah bless them all and elongate their life, they all have official websites, they all have official representatives around the world, they all have offices that you can contact by phone, contact mm -hmm. by email. email. Yes. And now they are also expanding to maybe having some official social media groups mm. like Instagram I've seen, yes. and, and Especially and, at uh, Sistani, uh, I've seen they have got proper website where you can post the questions and there are some questions already there that you can search for. And now yes. I've seen the same uh, uh, alsistani.org coming on Facebook as well. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Sure that's so, so, so the, the credible sources are there. Uh, there. So, it's just our responsibility to go to the credible sources. You can't get a fatwa or a ruling, an Islamic ruling from Facebook. True. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, as much as you know, Facebook has taken a big place in our lives, we have to understand that this is, you know, this, this is, is not your religion. Open, yeah. This is not, this is your religion. We, we, there is no space for mistakes. mistakes it's yes. kind of like your health. Yeah. Like you get health advice from, yeah. Yeah, this is the problem we have. I have this in my, in my day to day work is <laughs> okay. people say, I Googled this and they said that I should, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I brush my teeth with this and say, no, no, this no. is toxic. Don't do that. Don't you know do what that. I mean? Yes. So we have the same problem with health. We have this and we have the same problem with so it, it, it means that you have to go to the right doctor. You yes. should not go to Dr. Yeah. Google yeah. and get the answer. You should correct. go to Dr. Oz to get yes, the right correct, medicine. Correct. No. Uh, yes, you should go to the credible sources. So I, uh, I um, encourage all the youth, first of all, to begin with the websites of their Maraja Taqlid. Mm -hmm. Regardless of who their Maraja Taqlid, they should go to the official websites of their Maraja Taqlid. And Alhamdulillah, all of the websites of the Maraja Taqlid are available in Arabic, English, Urdu, Farsi, Turkey, any language you can think of, they are available. 
and also uh, to use the books, books, books. not Wikipedia, <laughs> not Google, <laughs> okay? To use books, Alhamdulillah, Al-Kafi Sharif is now available in all languages. languages. Yes. And it's all available on internet as on well. On the internet, yeah, yes. Yeah. In PDF, you can yeah. download it in PDF, you can download it on your iPad yeah. and read it. Uh, the, you know, the, the books of fiqh, fiqh are all available now. The books, the books of Aqa'id mm-hmm. are now, now by, by credible scholars, you know, Alam al-Hilli, his books have now been translated, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, and also, on top of that, we need to make sure that we are always checking before sharing sure. the information. The credibility yeah. of the... Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people say, I am sharing this, but it's not my responsibility. No, it is your responsibility. Because you're sharing wrong information. You are sharing wrong information, yeah, yeah. and people may be uh, misguided, misguided. By, by your spreading of this true. information. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. people say, uh, I, have, I take no responsibility for this. Forward, 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 forward. Mm-hmm. And they forward it to hundreds of people. No, you have taken responsibility. The moment you forward it, it's your responsibility. Because at the end of the day, if that it's been transferred and then somebody removed that statement, I don't take the responsibility. And then be, that becomes a credible source for this person. It yes. goes on and then yes. goes on. Yeah, it makes and, sense. And also, we are living in, an, in, in a world of information overload. overload. We don't need these little clips and videos and things like that that have no benefit to us. We should be concentrating on the beneficial things. True, true. Uh, viewers, as you can see, he, the Mr. Uh, Dr. Oss was mentioning that we should follow the credible sources like you know, the, the books that he mentioned, or coffee and the fifth books that are also available online nowadays. We should follow only the credible source instead of, you know, wasting our time on social media and all. Coming back to this point, uh, social media, as you can see, it's one of the part. How much should a social media be used by youth or the, the kids nowadays? They are also getting involved with this. Yes. How much should they get involved now, how much, like, say you're a doctor, you're going to mention, okay, this much minute you can use and your purpose of doing it should be this, if you were to advise. Yes. It's very hard. First of all, we have to understand that striking a balance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Striking a balance in everything is essential. I mean, even Islam calls for striking a balance in worship. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi found a man who had uh, abandoned his family, mm-hmm. abandoned his work, abandoned his kids, abandoned his wife, abandoned his home, and went to worship. For nights and days, he went to, I said, I'm a her, I'm a, a fully a religious abid. person, yeah. yes. And, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, no, this is not, this is not what Islam wants. Islam wants a balance. You look after your family, mm-hmm. you look after your deen, and you look after your your day-to-day living. So, social media, unfortunately, it can become a very strong and bad habit that takes over your life, that you become addicted to it. And we have to be very careful from that. Because when you become addicted to it, you have trouble then striking the balance with other things, like meeting your religious demands, Mm -hmm. meeting your social demands, meeting your family demands, meeting your work demands, meeting your study demands, right? Mm -hmm. And I I know that from professors at university and things that are now doing lots of research showing the effect on social media on students, Mm -hmm. university students, on high school students, that they are having trouble focusing on the teacher. The teacher is talking to them. To them and they they, they can't focus because they are so used to reading little posts <laughs> of little sentences. So when a chemistry teacher comes and gives you a paragraph, oh. they can't comprehend it anymore. True, that's so true. So how do you expect a child who's on social media all the time to be able to come to madrasa on Saturday mm-hmm. and be able to memorize a chapter of Quran? That's right. It's very difficult. So who does play this role? They, okay, these are the teenagers, let's say, who are growing up. Now you reckon it's the role of the parents yes. or the guardian or there's an elder brother who's looking after them. Mm. Th- that's their role, right? Yes. To kind of force them, but in, you know, invest in world where you can't force things on kids now. Mm. Otherwise, they will sue you. They'll call <laughs> police and yeah. Yeah, no. So, yeah. Look, I think when they are still young and mm-hmm. under your control, 
That's you the can reduce or control the amount of exposure they have to a very uh, healthy level. Old. Maybe you say to them, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, this, that's much. Mm-hmm. Until they get to that teenage years where the Prophet says, become friends with them. You know, Sadiq from Sab'an. So when you are friends with them, then you can suddenly start having opening that conversation with them. Like we say, as a parent who is now got a teenage child who is starting to be spending too much time with social media, you say, do you think, you know, we can maybe do something about uh, doing something else with our time, suggesting alternatives to doing with our time? Should we think about doing this? Should we do it? Not, I'm going to confiscate this phone from you. You're not going to see it for another month. <laughs> this is not a practical solution. Yeah, it's not right. yeah. And this is not the Islamic way of dealing with teenagers. Teenagers, yes. The Prophet sallallahu as I said, his recommendation is that you deal with them like friends. <coughs> like friends. As friends, if we, we are out having lunch or... We're negotiating, yeah. We are, I negotiate yeah. with yeah. you. Say, no, please, I really want to have lunch here. You say, I really want to have mm-hmm. lunch here. We kind of negotiate where we go. Look. It's not, I am your boss. Yeah. <laughs> so th- this is how, you know, you, you need to deal with the Gee. teenagers. Okay. Yes. Uh, you were about to share something? Yes. The other dangerous thing about uh, social media is that people think that because they are hiding behind a computer screen and they are posting things, that they are not responsible for their words or their actions. Mm-hmm. It's like amal, kitab al-a'mal, mm-hmm. yeah, is only for when I am physically present. Okay. So if I come and say verbally something abusive to you, then Allah will say he's done something haram. <laughs> but if I send you a message yeah. abusing you or if I post it on your Facebook page, it's not haram. It's not haram. No. Yeah. We have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qulu linnasi husna. Say to the people good. So slander, accusations, uh, spreading rumors, uh, you know, uh, riba. Uh, all of these things, Namima, uh, Bhutan, are muharram on social media as That's well as verbal, yeah. verbal as well as written. written yes. They are all the same. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida. Make sure that if you are going to utter anything, regardless of you posting it on Facebook or if you are posting it on Instagram or you are, that you are careful with what you are saying. And I'll give you an example of how written mm-hmm. is just as much as important as verbal. Okay. Because we usually think riba mm-hmm. is only haram uh, verbal. When, verbal, when yeah. we are, but, but, or, or... But what, what, if, if I, I want to interrupt you, what's the reason people do that? Like, psychologically, they forget... Yeah, they are protected behind the screen. screen okay. They think that because they are behind the screen, they are not responsible for their action. And it's, it's the fear of the other person, that other, what other person is yes, going to judge. You, do, you don't see the reaction in their face. Yeah, okay. So that you can, you, you can do. We have a hadith mm-hmm. that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says that whoever writes my name mm-hmm. and writes after my blessed name sallallahu alayhi wa alihi that writing that you wrote mm-hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa alihi remains doing salawat for you as long as it's written on that paper subhanallah subhanallah so you it will continue remain because it's now written on paper so it's one of the example that it's going to keep on doing yeah. the ajr for you and we know that on social media whatever you post actually never gets deleted that's right and this is the big issue now that these big yeah. social media people yeah. are dealing with the with the thing is that even if i close my facebook account 10 years later the information is still saved somewhere yes in the supercomputers. In the super, yeah, whatever, <laughs> in the memory, in the, in the yeah, clouds, yeah. wherever they, they store them. Okay. So, th- so we have to make sure that we are careful <coughs> mm-hmm. what we say on social media. Make sure that we are only spreading correct information. Otherwise, we are going to be take, taken partner in that wrong information that we have spread. And at the same time, we have to keep up our good reputation mm-hmm. as Shia as followers of Ahlul Bayt Ali and as We're always you know, the ambassador of Ahlul Bayt. You know, right. we are representing Shias and we are yes. representing the message of Imam Ali al Islam. Right. So we always so our Facebook group, our Facebook yeah. pages, our Instagram pages our, should be the cleanest, the purest, the nicest, the kindest uh, 
to everything. A, a perfect example of how it should be. قال الإمام الصادق عليه السلام معاشر الشيعة كونوا لنا زينا ولا تكونوا علينا شينا قولوا للناس حسنا احفظوا ألسنتكم وكفوها عن الفضول وقبيح القول. This is in Amal al-Saduq. Uh, the, the book of Amali no. by Shaykh al-Saduq Allah ta'ala alayhi he said yeah, make sure that you are good representatives for us not bad representatives to us say to the people that which is good hmm. and don't say anything that which is abusive and and protect your tongue from anything that is not necessary mm-hmm. Fudul is somebody who talks about things that are not necessary no. You know, he talks about any topic, regardless, important or not. Abusive, slander, that kind of thing. So we have to make sure that this social media is something that Excuse we use right. wisely. Yes. We use so otherwise, this can create two personalities as well. I've yes. seen in some cases Perfect. where people are in front, they're trying to be a good person and all that. And how well, once they get onto internet, they're totally different persons and then eventually they're struggling through their life as well when they're meeting different people they have different faces yes yes yeah. so and they don't then know, become they, facebook of they, you know the yeah, words yeah. yeah and they don't know who they really are yeah. they will lose their identity, the identity yeah. yes yeah. Uh, let's say what is the psychological reason you have done researches and all that what's the psychological reason that the youth is very Inter, you know, attractive to this so, kind of social media is Instagram or uh, you know Facebook. What drives them to you know this? So if we know that, mm. we then we know what's the solution, where to stop it. Like what drives them? Is it just the the way it's been made by you know the these people? They have done psychological research on that. Yeah. yeah. Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. And it is very personalized to what their interest is. You see, if you are following always Islamic pages on your Facebook, Facebook will start giving you suggestions for why don't you join this group, why don't you join this group. group, If you are uh, into athletics and you're constantly following uh, people doing athletics and sports and sports players, you will start getting more. So first of all, it personalizes it to you what you Mm -hmm. want. And second of all, it is it is entertainment. And entertainment, I'm not saying in Islam um, that it is, you know, haram. Hmm. Entertainment in Islam is not haram as long as I said we keep it balanced. Balanced, yes. You know? And we don't let it overcome, take over our lives. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is the risk. I mean it I mean it, it every generation had that same same trouble. You know, the generation before us they had the trouble with the being addicted to the PlayStation and the Nintendo. Mm-hmm. The generation before us, they could have been addicted to something else. In entertainment is always that alluring, that uh, you know, that attraction that attracts the youth. So, but striking that balance, making sure that we keep a happy uh, balance mm-hmm. between our Islamic responsibilities our study responsibilities, you know, most of them are school students or university students and our family Family. responsibilities as well. And as I said, use it wisely. Mm -hmm. So many, so many brothers and sisters, they go on these things or go on these social media and they join useless groups that have no benefit. Alhamdulillah, now you can spread the message of Imam Hussein using social media. Yes, that's so true. You can uh, spread the, the words of Ahlul Bayt, you know, Imam Rida, السلام, he says, he says that if the people knew the beauty of our words, mm-hmm. surely they would follow us. SubhanAllah. So you can post once a week, not every day, don't bombard people, once a week on the day of Jum'ah, for example, one hadith of one of the Imams. One hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and translate it, and let the people recognize your even your non-Muslim friends will see it. We'll see it. Recognize the beauty and the logic and the mercy and the kindness of the of the words of Ahlul Bayt and himself, and 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 that will be your way of doing da'wah. Yeah. And then at the same time, you will find you will find that 
people once they get to know the words of Ahlul Bayt they will surely be attracted to it. But there's some youth that get shy, you know. They have this feeling of being shy. Oh, if I post something about Imam Hussain or what other people are, if I post something about the sorrow of Imam Hussain, what the others gonna do? What's your message to those kind of you know, those kind of youth or kids yeah. so to, to come out of their box and you know to be more confident than more shy sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Social pressures and peer pressures mm. is, is always there. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, our sisters, they have that difficulty day Especially, to day. Yeah. Every morning they open the house door wearing hijab, to yeah. walk yeah. out. They are wearing their Islamic identity yeah. on their head. Yeah. So, no doubt, maybe you and I sure. might be able to get away with yeah. it. But they can't. They can't. True. So, I say, if there is any inspiration in for us youth who are worried about people judging us because of what we post mm-hmm. or based on our actions or based on what we put on our social media and you say well if you are so worried about that then you know what do you do with mm-hmm. with all with our sisters That's who are going to work you should get hijab. inspired by them yeah. they are inspirational yeah, yeah. to us the second thing is if you don't have the confidence in your faith then that means you need to go back and reflect Re- yourself. Review everything. Review everything that you know. <clears throat> Am I confident in the message of Islam? Do I know enough? Am I confident in the message of the, of the prophets and the imams? Uh, what do I know about them? If I don't have enough information, what should I do? That I become mm-hmm. immune. So you that, become yeah. immune, so that if somebody, somebody comes, strikes, yeah. somebody strikes, you know the answer. Absolutely. I always say to I always say to my um, fellow students in mm. the, in the madrasa, I said always prepare short and sweet answers mm-hmm. for the moment you get asked a question. For our sisters, I always say always have a, a ready answer for why, when you get asked why you wear hijab, why you Muslim, why do you believe God exists. Mm-hmm. Have a short. And concise it's answer prepared. so that it's ready to go, mm-hmm. ready to go so that you are confident that you can answer any question that may come to you. Yeah. Why, 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 do you, why are you Muslim? Why do you follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? All of these things you should have a ready, ready set answer so that you are confident in what you are doing. Okay. Uh, lastly, what's your message? So we are talking about was the parent like the role of the parent and the guardians towards the kids as well. Now I want you to reflect back from what's the role of a youth or a kid towards the parents in terms of, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the peer pressure and all that. Should they be informing them or they should just go to, you know, their friend and inform them? Mm-hmm. Like how to get rid of this peer pressure? Mm-hmm. Are the pra- parents the right source to get to? Yes. See, Islam <clears throat> has made it very clear that you should play with the children for seven years Mm -hmm. and you should discipline them for seven years and you should befriend them and become friends with them for seven years. Mm -hmm. That time of peer pressure, the third seven years, which is the teenage years, Mm -hmm. if the parent is a good friend of that teenage boy and girl, that teenage boy and girl will find the confidence and will find the uh, assurance to go and approach their mother or their father and say at school people are doing this Mm -hmm. at school this is happening my friend told me to do this Mm -hmm. my friend said this what should i do and we as 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 friends we do that right we talk about well i don't know what to do about this what do i do sometimes we text each other what happened i can't believe this is happening what should i do but unfortunately because of that gap that generational gap that we are creating Mm -hmm. between parents and children that the children have difficulty speaking to their parents Mm -hmm. about the peer pressures they are facing so there is no way that they can get guidance that's true and at the same time, the parents have trouble transferring their concerns or transferring their, uh, their, their, their matters or their teachings to the kids because there's such a gap. They want to continue to discipline them just like when they were 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old and dealing with them as a 15 year old. Mm. Just like you used to say to your 8 year old, don't do that, do this. 
it doesn't work like that anymore. So friendship, friendship, friendship. friendship. You have to become really close friends. The parent has to put in the effort first, and then you. And then yeah, take it. and then that, and then he will find the the parent, the father, and the mother will find the reciprocating effect. Effect. Yeah, yeah that there's a friendship and once that bond of friendship happens then the peer pressure will be eased because yes i'm being pressured into doing muharram and being pressured into doing something forbidden mm -hmm. i'm being pressured into doing something like that by my friends but i find the confidence to speak to my parents, my parents. about it that they will help me resolve these issues so that means that parents first of all the parents should make the kids or the you know the, or any kid male female to be confident on them and then they sh will see the effect that they will be sharing the things with them. Yes. What is your conclusive message to the youth who are watching Heather TV at the moment? Would you like to give a conclusive message just to the youth that what should, what, what is their purpose of life and how should they process it and, and at the end of the day, uh, what's the result they should expect? Yes. Just a conclusive message. Thank you very much. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ali إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمْ ثِقْلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَعِتْرَةِ أَهْلَ بَيْتِ I have left for you two important uh, things the Holy Quran and my family أَهْلُ الْبَيْتِ عَلَيْهُمْ السَّلَامِ and we Alhamdulillah live in a day and age where we have access to both of them the Holy Quran is available to us the teachings of أَهْلُ الْبَيْتِ عَلَيْهُمْ السَّلَامِ are available to us we need to hold in onto those two sources as much as we can so that we can be successful in this world and in the hereafter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasana. God will make us successful in this world regardless of the generation, regardless of we are living in the east or the west, regardless of you know we are teenagers or in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Hold on to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. Hold on to the Holy Quran and you will find yourself successful, as difficult as it may be during your youth, youth years. But be assured that you will be successful at the end of the day as long as you hold on to those two things. Subhanallah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.